Okay, I might have lied a bit in my title. Low-carb diets might not necessarily make you stupid, but you definitely have to be stupid to go on one to begin with and promote them, and starving your brain of glucose definitely doesn't help. And celebrity chef Pete Evans has to be just naturally stupid because he thought it was a good idea to make a paleo diet book for kids that could literally outright kill children. And this incident has gotten a lot of media attention all around the world, and fortunately it's just one of those situations where everyone can just unanimously agree that this guy is a complete fucking idiot. But unfortunately, not everyone thinks Tim Noakes is a complete idiot, not only because he hasn't nearly killed any children, but he also has charts and graphs. Now, at face value, this might look impressive, but if you actually listen to his lecture... Now, we don't have the scientific proof this is true, but... But the yes, you heard it from the man himself. He has no scientific evidence supporting his claims, yet the people at that lecture are still listening and taking him seriously. And since people are stupid enough to take him seriously, why not make a film starring him and other idiots called Serial Killers? Now this documentary, Serial Killers, it really reminded me a lot of Forks Over Knives, and they're really not that much different in terms of like format and how things are presented but they're just absolute polar opposites when it comes to content overall message and just general quality now looking at the cast of forks over knives we see many medical doctors including dr matthew letterman dr alona Palday, dr t colin campbell dr coddell esselstein dr john mcdougall and dr neil bernard all of course who are licensed medical doctors now we have serial killers. Yeah, one doctor who isn't even an MD. Did this help to raise your expectations? Two years ago, I would have said that health is probably 80% exercise, 20% nutrition. Based on what I now know, I actually believe it's the other way around. And my, my dad was a big, you know, football star in his day. Lean, out. fit, healthy, never drank. Immediately yeah. these other tests as well. And yeah. boom, heart attack. These men were elite sportsmen. They were incredibly fit. Everything that you would associate with, you know, vibrant health, they had it. And then further down the line, these illnesses emerge. So you have to question what the hell happened there. So the documentary starts off by introducing us to a guy named Donald O'Neill and he just goes on about how his father died of heart disease and he just wants to experiment with his diet and see if this low-carb thing works and he just has this feeling that he's being lied to by the general establishment about what's a healthy diet and I keep saying documentary in quotations because this doesn't seem real to me all of this seems staged I think this guy Donald O'Neill is just a paid actor and a few times during this movie, I actually thought this was a joke, like this was just a troll film, but no, it's fucking real, and you're about to see why I fucking think this. USDA, the AHA, and the AMA came out and said, we need to reduce our consumption of fat to prevent heart disease, right? Has it worked? Disaster. I was conditioned like everybody else to believe certain things. I found out that a lot of what I thought I knew was what you can only describe as lies. The base of the pyramid would be mostly your carbohydrate foods, which is your breads, your cereals, your vegetables and your fruits, proteins, dairy products, and then the very apex of the pyramid would be your fats and your oils. So this film doesn't spend much time messing around, it goes right away and starts attacking the food pyramid and how it supports eating lots of grains and fruits and vegetables and very little meat. And I'm saying standard medical opinion and standard government advice is not where I'm looking for solutions anymore. I want to see if I can hack my genes. So for 28 days, I'm going to completely disregard the food pyramid. No wheat, no sugar. I'm going to gorge on fat and I'm going to see what happens. Now, I'm fine with conflicting viewpoints and criticism, but it's the way the film does it that's just so fucking brain dead and offensive. Instead of using any kind of medical evidence for their claims, what they do is they make these crazy assumptions and then draw these dumbass conclusions. 
So the film basically says, oh, absolutely everyone must be following this food guide to the letter, and that's what's causing all this chronic illness. Under the guidance of Professor Tim Noakes, I'm going to use medicine and medical tools to see the impact of the food plan. So now this guy starts getting his fucking diet advice from Tim Noakes, and he gets his blood work and stuff done, and he definitely looks like a fit athletic guy, but... In terms of an average patient that, that you would see, I'm probably not the norm. Coming from a, a family of lean athletes who have gone on to develop type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, I'm looking for an intervention. High fat intake um, will have an impact on your cholesterol. God bless your steady hand. Your fat percentage is at 13.6%. So that's, that's excellent. Cholesterol, this is where it starts getting interesting. So first we look at total cholesterol, and yours is high. High cholesterol has been shown to be a cardiovascular risk. Yep, his cholesterol levels are already high, and no, I'm not going to spoil the movie for you. You're just going to have to guess what happens after the guy starts eating a diet high in saturated fat and cholesterol. So this is the first shot for the start of the food plan. So these are my secret weapons, uh, macadamia nuts. They're about 80% fat. I reckon macadamias will probably account for 30% of my total calorific intake. It's some frozen mixed berries. Uh, berries are very low in sugar. A nice leg of lamb. And of course, eggs. Any research that I've done on eggs is resoundingly positive and an egg is almost perfect food. I don't know what research this guy's been looking at because all of the studies that I've seen show that eggs greatly increase heart disease and all-cause mortality risk. But you know what, let's just wait and watch more of this film because I'm sure that they're going to provide lots of scientific evidence for their claims. Now we don't have the scientific proof this is true, but... And so the film interviews some experts to get their opinions on dietary fat and its relation to disease. One of the first things they used to say if you had heart disease was no fat. Mm. And of course that was completely wrong because you need the good fats. I, I always think about macadamia nuts as being nature's vitamin pill because they have such terrific uh, medicinal benefits. Yes. yes, the film's first expert is an obese woman who represents a nut company and she's telling us that dietary fat has no relation to disease and she's giving us a sale pitch on macadamia. Hey, what the f wait a second, this is a fucking product placement. And this sets the pace for the film's dishonest bullshit. Yes, macadamia nuts are healthy, they do have lots of vitamins, minerals, and anti-inflammatory properties. But the film is trying to tell us that all fats are fucking equal, and that, oh, fats from nuts are the same as fats from bacon. Now, we don't have the scientific proof this is true, but... But let's see what another one of the film's experts has to say about this low-carb diet. For a four-week period, I've been eating, I'm eating about 20, 25 eggs a week, a kilo of macadamia nuts, probably three kilos of meat and bacon, uh, full-fat Greek yogurt, berries. I've cut out wheat and sugar. Okay. How does that sound to a super chef like yourself? Uh, it sounds like you need to eat a little bit more what you are eating. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm, yeah. Let's just listen to a fat chef rather than a medical doctor. Good going, serial killers. If we told you that was actually extremely healthy for you, would you believe us? Um, not initially, unless you could prove it. <laughs> but is it really healthy? You need to talk to this guy. I think the food pyramid is a, a disaster, really. It's really based on the principle that the diet should be very carbohydrate rich and relatively low in fat. Okay. And actually, we know a lot of that just isn't true now. And now we've met the film's top expert, a guy who claims he's a doctor despite not being an actual medical doctor. I guess just having doctor before your name gives you some undeserved credibility. I think you've tried to make a fool of me, buddy. No, oh, well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think he wants to go forward with his girlfriend. Yeah, I think I do. I said I did. Well, why do you want to do that? Because I said I would, and I don't 
I'm a man of my word when I say I want to well, do something. Well, I'll certainly I do that. release you from that commitment whatsoever. Well, no, I didn't ask to be released from that commitment. I said I was going to do something, and I intend to do what I what I said I was going to do. Do you want my help? That's with how it? I, that's how I live my life today. Yes, I do want your help with that. Even though you think I've made a fool out of you. No, I don't think you made a fool out of me. Well, that's what I, you said, and no, I can play that no, back. I, I got no, it on tape. I said I think came out in the. 70s, the average consumer is eating less uh, fat in their diet. They are eating uh, more carbohydrate in their diet, and we've got rampant increases in obesity, diabetes, heart disease. And then they show a very interesting chart about how Americans are eating more carbs and less fat and are getting more obese. Well, here's another very interesting chart where Americans seem to be eating more and more meat. Someone's wrong here. Are we going to figure out who? Up to 1959. Everyone knew that carbohydrates made you fat. The high carbohydrate diet came in, obviously, as a result of Ansel Keys and the lipophobia that he generated. Six countries have been used to produce uh, this study. That original work showed an association between you know, the amount of saturated fat consumed in some countries, but when you look more widely, uh, it turns out that uh, the association just really wasn't there, or it was significantly weakened. Ansel Keys manipulated the data and chose six countries where there was a linear relationship between increasing fat in a diet and the increasing rate of heart disease. And unfortunately, he deleted 16 countries. And if you add those 16 countries, there is no relationship. Ugh. I heard this argument from every single low-carb idiot. Ansel Keys chose those countries because that's where he could get the most accurate data. Countries like Mexico didn't even have a death certificate system at that time. Are they saying that Ansel Keys should have just included junk fucking data in his research? And to make things even fucking dumber, researchers Yurashami and Hillabo took data from all 22 countries and found that not only did animal fat correlate well with heart disease, but animal protein correlated with heart disease even fucking better! So why didn't Tim Noakes mention this? Did he just not know of this research? Is he stupid? Is he biased? You know, we don't have the scientific proof this is true, but... The jogging epidemic that hit the US in the 70s and 80s was incredibly damaging to hips, to knees, and to hearts for that matter. This is how I'm training at the moment. I find the short, intense training techniques are much more effective. One and a half minutes of effort. Oh. Now, I thought this film was joking here. I thought this was a troll film after I heard of this. I didn't think it was a real documentary. But no, they're fucking serious. They think that cardiovascular exercise increases heart disease risk and you should only train for eight minutes a week. What theoretically would be the best diet for us as a species, and you could argue, a diet based on foods we've been eating a long time. For the vast majority of our time, we've been hunter-gatherers, we think, and what do hunters and gatherers eat? Well, hunted and gathered foods, and what's the hunted food? Meat. Oh, and great, now we have this fat doctor again making appeal to nature fallacies. What the fuck is this? This is nothing but assumptions. Where the fuck is the scientific evidence? What the fuck is this now? There's nothing but a bunch of fucking cows. Oh, oh, pigs. They have pigs. That changes everything. Now they have a case. We want to do it the natural way. No antibiotics are pasture animals. The fat is yellow. They on grain feed uh, and feedlots. The fat is white. Uh, the, the housewife sees like the nice white looking uh, fat, then not knowing that from pasture it's yellow. And this is another one of the film's great experts, a fat cattle rancher. Let's listen to him rather than a medical doctor who has spent decades researching diet related diseases. Now here's the truth. One thing that's particularly pervasive that I think has much more destructive effects than people really recognize is bread. A you know, standard healthy breakfast is usually cereal, Toast with fruit juice. And what have you got there? Uh, you have got a stack of sugar because starchy chains of sugar molecules. One of the uh, potential problems here is that if you have a lot of sugar being liberated into the system, you get a higher blood sugar, which then can cause the body to secrete a hormone called insulin, which in copious quantities can actually drive blood sugar levels 
to lower than normal levels. Uh, that can damage the body in a number of ways. First of all, uh, because if you make a lot of insulin over many years, you could eventually become unresponsive to the effects of insulin. So this is basically type 2 diabetes. Okay, so now this guy is talking about insulin production and its relation to diabetes and other chronic diseases, and I happen to agree that chronically high insulin levels can increase disease risk, including risk for diabetes. But what he doesn't seem to realize is that animal protein is as insulinogenic as pure sugar, and high-fat diets can cause hyperinsulinemia and reduce insulin sensitivity. And uh, he might have known that if he was a medical doctor and not just a pretend doctor. I just got a text from Gabby saying that my DNA test well, is interesting. I got your message and I understand that we have some red flags in the, uh, the DNA report. My father obviously had a a heart attack, which is why I started this whole process. So is there anything in there that uh, tells me that I would be a candidate for that? Yes. Okay. So you're high risk of inflammation. Okay, so now O'Donnell just found out that he is genetically predisposed to have high inflammation levels, and he's eating a diet that is high in saturated fat, which activates pro-inflammatory genes. For this guy to keep doing this diet, he must be completely fucking retarded. Now people are appreciating inflammation is probably the basis for most of the chronic illnesses that we face. And the high carbohydrate diets are highly inflammatory. Oh, oh really Tim? High carb diets are pro-inflammatory. Uh, do you have any evidence for that? No, we don't have the scientific proof this is true, but... Yeah, that's what I fucking thought, bitch. And with all this lack of evidence, Tim Noakes has to come up with bullshit about cholesterol size to confuse laymen who just don't know any better. No question, if you were treated in Dublin, you would be treated on a statin, and you would be warned that you're at very high risk. I disagree completely. I think that a high value can be completely normal. Within cholesterol, there are large particles and small particles. And what they're finding now is that the smaller, denser particles are more likely to cause cardiovascular disease than the larger particles. The small particles are the ones that invade into the arteries and then become oxidized and inflamed and then you get this inflammatory response that causes the heart attack. You cannot treat this condition of so-called high cholesterol without knowing what is the particle size. There is absolutely no evidence on the fucking planet that large buoyant LDL particles are not atherogenic. It's only harder for them to permeate the arterial wall compared to small dense. Not impossible. And all of the research shows that your best chance at preventing heart disease is to have low cholesterol levels. For Tim Noakes to say, oh, it doesn't matter if your cholesterol levels are high because the particle size is large, it's just a flat out fucking lie. Now, we don't have the scientific proof this is true, but. I've been working with the Australian cricket team now for almost 12 months. Since I've been on the high fat, low carb diet, my what I eat during the day has changed significantly. Uh, in the morning, I'd have bacon and eggs. Um, and probably some strawberries and blueberries. Normally I'd take the fat off the bacon. Um, I'm eating that, which I always enjoyed, but I thought that was, was you're supposed to take it off to be a healthy athlete. No, I've, I feel obviously a lot fitter. I feel a lot better. I've lost a lot, a lot of weight during time without even trying. My favourite is um, a steak with nice pieces of fat on it to be able to give me some nice flavour. Okay, we have to wrap this up. So after providing absolutely no scientific evidence throughout the entire film that his diet is at all beneficial, this is what they come up with. I just broke my record. I feel lighter, I feel very powerful. He broke a personal record. Now, some of you might have noticed that they don't even mention what that personal record was, but I think you're missing the important point. He works out for eight minutes a fucking week! What fucking personal records isn't he gonna break? So I just sat through an hour-long film where fat people told me to eat more fat, and they hired an athletic guy to try out this diet for a month, and he broke some sort of personal record, or so he says, while training eight minutes a week. The end. <laughs> What a relief! When will this poisonous product cease?
This is another public service announcement. You can believe it or you can doubt it. Let us begin now with the cow. The way it gets to your plate and how. Now we don't have the scientific proof as it's true, but...